There has never been a time in history where more chaos has been diluted by the mainstream media and government agencies. We have exceeded the Lehman crisis in many categories using the various indicators unveiled here. Monetary and fiscal policies only expand the pockets of the global banking system's controllers and exacerbate the underlying root cause of the issues at hand. Welcome to the new world. Well, you came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. There is so much information to cover today. Let's get to it right away. At the beginning, we're going to talk about Greece. The lower house of the German parliament approved an extension of the Greek bailout by a, ward mar by a wide margin on Friday, but a substantial rebellion within the ranks. Uh, basically, they didn't want this to happen, but for the majority of them, they did. So this is out of the Financial Times, and what we're looking at is the situation in Greece, in fact, escalating. But of course, they did approve this, as was expected too. While the four-month extension was passed with a comfortable majority, some of them basically did not want to um, get onto this. And that is uh, really something that we expected to happen as well. So there's obviously some violence that has been taking place and there was actually the anti-government protest against this new government. But once again, that is something that has happened before in Greece as well. Look at this right here. You got the Greek five-year bond yield increasing over the past couple days. And then you have the Greek stock market, which continues to decline. And this is not looking pretty for certain Greek assets, that's for sure. So I'm going to move on very quickly here. What we're looking at uh, out of CNBC is people in Greece and their deposits being a concern. The mainstream media and the government will continue to project the message that your funds are always safe in the banking system. So let's get into that here. In the midst of the dramatic showdown in Brussels between the Greek government and the European creditors, many Greek depositors are essentially spooked and they're worried they've been pulling out their euros of the nation's banks. Right here, the Bank of Greece and the ECB won't report on the official cash Flow, uh, cash outflows, that's pretty obvious. They don't want to cause any uh, issues because any little bit of fear is obviously going to make people pull out their money, and they certainly have been. But sources in the Greek banking sector have told the Greek newspapers that as much as 25 billion euros, and that is very large for the uh, Greek banking system, since the end of December, 25 billion euros. So that is enough to make a very big difference when it comes to the stability of these financial institutions. Of course, we have a situation where the banking system cannot be sustained without a, a lot of the money being uh, remaining with the banks. You can't take your money out, of course, if everyone were to try to take their money out. Because of the fractional reserve banking scheme, they're going to go bankrupt. Let's move on to what we are seeing in the Ukraine right now. Obviously, with the big tensions coming over from Russia and on that border, we can see a lot of action taking place. And right here, Ukraine central bank tightened capital controls and announced more curbs may be on the way to stop the currency's meltdown, fueling a rebound in the world's worst performing currency this month. And in fact, the more capital controls they place onto the system, the worse it's going to get. That's the way it works, in fact. They can't really stop it from happening. And what will uh, take place is something that we've seen before in history. It's just the same things repeating. These are cycles that take place. Look at what I wrote about in my book. This is from the chapter on the 1920 crash that occurred, and I'm quoting Warren G. Harding. Gross expansion of the currency and credit have depreciated the dollar just as the expansion and inflation have discredited the coins of the world. We inflated in haste. We must deflate in deliberation. We debase the dollar in reckless finance. We must restore in honesty. Now, those words there are never even spoken anymore. Sadly, 
but here at least they were willing to admit their faults and understood what they had to do in order to get things back up and running. Look at this, Puerto Rico, the third largest uh, bank in Puerto Rico, according to assets, in fact, had a very big problem and need to be bailed out by the FDIC. This is Doral Bank and essentially needed to go in and send off their assets to the biggest bank there, uh, Banco Popular. And they said this at the bottom, the FDIC estimates that the cost to the deposit insurance fund will be $750 million. And although that's not much money in the grand scheme of things, compared to the actual amount that the FDIC has, it actually is a significant number because we know the FDIC has virtually no money when you compare it to the total amount of currency that we are supposed to have access to. But of course, that is simply not the case. Now, the reason I mention this is because the banking system will become um, more and more of a failure and we will see that as the days, the months, the weeks go on, we're going to see many more banks that fail and we're going to see the FDIC having to come out. We're going to see all these sort of schemes where they take money and they take debt and they swash it around and they try to make something of it. But of course, we can always see through this. Let's move on right here. Look at the Turkish lira against the US dollar and significantly declining in its uh, value against the US dollar. Of course, this is one currency against another. The US dollar is looking pretty, but only against a whole bunch of ugly currencies. Let's move on here to this, where we're looking at a chart and what I want to highlight from this chart is the S&P 500 going in the exact opposite direction of the uh, GDP growth expectations. And that is obviously because this doesn't mean uh, the, the actual indicators that they show us, the stock market being one, the US dollar being one, it's not an actual real indicator of the economy. It's fun to look at and to pay attention to and to sort of you know, uh, use all these 200 day moving averages and all the, the things that these people create. But the real fact is that the economy is going downward. And of course, when you have these numbers moving in the opposite direction, you know that something is definitely not right. Look at the PMI, Chicago PMI moving back to create uh, the crisis levels Lehman Brothers crash at the same uh, time here we're looking at a very uh, good indicator in fact of the economy a significant decline recently and it's going to be a bigger burden as time goes on because of course the manufacturing is no longer there I'm going to move on quickly lots to discuss US quarterly GDP revised downward I believe it was from 5% to 2.2 if I'm not mistaken and of course course, this is something that's going to be a trend that we'll see in the future as well as they lie to us with those 5%, supposed 5% GDP growth when we know that that all came from Obamacare's increase in the spending and we know that there is going to be a negative, um, a negative uh, future for this economy. Let's move on to the last article right here out of the Wall Street Journal. Volatility is roiling the oil markets luring traders in search of quick profits but discouraging longer term investors who had grown accustomed to more muted swings so this is what's very interesting so we have volatility in oil but because the traders are now actively able to profit from it because they trade intra have this intraday trading they have their computer algorithms that go out and and make all this fuss about any particular commodity or or market you're going to have it actually increasing and becoming even worse so the more volatility there is the more there is and that's the way it works and it is um, quite interesting to see what will happen with oil. Crude prices tumbled Thursday to their lowest levels in nearly a month after data released Wednesday showed inventories continuing to swell. This is you know an indicator that I'm not necessarily agreeing upon because they're saying the inventories have uh, begun to grow and that's why the or the major reason why the price of oil declined 
declined. I simply, I've said this before, and I simply don't agree that these stockpiles didn't just form overnight, whereas we saw the price of oil drop significantly in a short period of time. So, like I said, the inventories just didn't come from nowhere. They are, in fact, using this as an opportunity for uh, something else. You know, there are many uh, reasons why this could be happening, but the fact remains is that these indicators are not exactly, uh, they're not being truthful to us using these type of statistics. So we need to watch out for that as well. If you found this video informative, please give me a thumbs up. I just want to let you know that I've been replying to all the emails. I replied to every single one as of yesterday. So if you uh, didn't get a chance to get through to me, if I somehow missed your email, then uh, just please email me again. I apologize for that. Um, but definitely I've been getting to everybody on there. As for the comments, I'm really trying to get to you um, just to let you know. I basically look at the current day's video as well as the previous day's video and that's about all I can get to. I can't go to any any further than that so basically the one day backwards and that's about as far as I can get in the comments now there's just so many pouring in and that is because of the truth when you have the truth on your side then of course things will uh, grow and things will um, at attach to you magnetically. So. Of course, if you're not already, you need to become an insider. The Insiders is where I give out all my best intel for free. That is available at themoneygps.com. You just scroll down to the bottom, fill in your email address, and you get occasional emails from me with good, short, concise info.